Shine. The mic is hot. The mic is hot. Everybody out of their scared come up in. He said, I'm, I'm let you do it. I think we were all with a little discombobulated. <laughs> Forgot where stuff plugs in. And ah! Trying what to get a rhythm. Family. I don't want this feel over here. Yeah, I'm going to ask oh, you to politely not touch my pillow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gave my pillow a cute little pet name called Posture. Posture? Posture. Pillow like I threw my coat at E. Will over there. Well, I wasn't trying to throw my coat at E. Will. His head off. Uh-huh. But I took his head off too. Oh, I did. Yeah, I, I was back there watching. Yeah, E. Will was on the keys. All of a sudden, E. Will was like this. <laughs> <laughs> White looking like a doggone cranberry and gray goose over here. <laughs> you come up with some stuff like off the dome. It's actually dope. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be like you when I grow up. Nah, aim yeah. higher, Willis. Huh? Aim higher. Aim higher? Aim no, higher. baby, I want to be like you dope. I take Don't that. talk about my husband. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Listen, it's been... Almost a year. Am I right? Is it almost been a year since we done Taylor Talk? Anybody? I mean I definitely know it was before purple. Are you there? You okay? You sleepy? 
Because I'm ready for you tonight. <laughs> oh, we definitely back. It's been a year. Or eight months. Because I left and did the color purple. Shout out to my whole color purple family. That movie going to be so lit. Like, even if I wasn't a part of it, swear to y'all, it's going to be lit. So shout out to all of my family from The Color Purple, Coleman, to Raji, Danielle, Corey, Felicia, Hallie, like everybody killed. I'm forgetting a whole lot of people. You got Sierra. Sierra. Uh, um, Gabby. Yo, she killed. Yeah. Gab, we call her her. Oh, yeah, 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 my bad. You guys know her as her. I call her Gabby Gab. She killed Tamla Man. Lou Gossett Jr. Lou Gossett. David Allen Greer. Who? John Batiste. Yo, he kept me laughing the whole time on set, okay? His spirit is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, shout out to all the dancers. God, Tomati, they killed. They supported me and surrounded me because I had to learn how to tap dance. <laughs> yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, and they supported me in a major way. Shout out to Oprah, Scott Sanders. Shout uh, out to Bliss, Bliss for quarterbacking that thing. Truly on his John. <clears throat> he was on his Brady all yes. day. Yes. What a Tom, director. Tom Brady. I don't know who John Brady is, but <laughs> I will definitely be looking for him. Yeah, he killed. And Dan with the lights. Dan did not play about his lights, but I ain't going to take up all your time by Color Purple because that promotion will be coming soon, okay? So I'm going to take a little break. But it's good to be back. We left because of Purple. Thank y'all for sharing me with Color Purple. But I missed y'all. I really did. I missed you, Nice. What? Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. You know, I'll be trying to get stuff right, man. I'm, I miss y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, we back, we, we back, we back. I like your hoodie. I appreciate you. You must have gotten some trouble. No, I didn't. No, okay, because his hoodie no, say, I, I, love not, my hoodie say wife. I love my wife. I did wife. not get in no trouble. I'm going to call Lisa and ask I'm wearing this me. because I felt like wearing it proud. That's I know it. that's rich. I ain't in no trouble. You I've been got doing, a dope queen. I've been doing awesome. You been doing good? <laughs> I've been like, doing like, awesome. Yeah, he said, I've been on my A game. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to hear nothing about nothing. Full grown husband. Dereka. What up, Dereka? Keep your business off of Facebook. <laughs> you ought to keep your business off of Facebook. Ooh, early in the morning, sometimes late at night, you ought to keep your business off of Facebook. <laughs> My mama over there talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, mother was ready to go. She, she heard that crooning and she came in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice. Yo, nice had the beat for you. Don't start tonight. How are you? Feliz Navidad. Espero año. Uh, happy New Year. Um, happy uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, happy Easter. Happy Memorial Day. Fourth of July, oh no, Juneteenth. Just <laughs> the crazy part is Ken all day been like, you already hear bro say Feliz Navidad. I'm like, you ready for him to act the fool. The Happy trolls, Juneteenth. Man. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> uh, then Labor Day. Uh, I'm forgetting anything. Oh, happy birthday, Fantasia. Happy birthday, Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I really can't. How have you been? Good, good, yeah. good, good. We missed all of y'all. We got Miss Travis in the house Miss tonight. What up, Trav? Okay, okay. Hey. We was about to have a whole audience. Do you know I have about like 10 people hit me up and was like, can we come for Taylor Talk? I was like, y'all do know that's at my house, right? <laughs> we at home. But eventually, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. This might be a little talk show that we have, you know? <laughs> Yeah, see, man. <laughs> Don't even worry about it, no. Don't even worry about it. Uh, all right, all right. The Rika's over here giving them. God, Tom. 
We have listen, family. Listen. You know everybody forgot, you know. I'm gonna get this out the way. Um, so we can we can cook up. I wanna shout out Primary Wave, our our team. Shout out to Sabrina. I know she's watching. She was excited for Taylor Talk to come back. Like some people that I didn't even think was watching Taylor Talk was watching Taylor Talk. So that's dope. Shout out Sabrina. We also want to rec- welcome uh, my big brother Rico Barino to uh, salute, bruh. Rock Soul. He is my first artist and writer. Well. Dennis Reed is a part of the family, so now we got two heavy hitters. And uh, we are in the booth now working on two albums. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, I want to get out the way. Jacksonville, Florida, Hollywood, Florida, Detroit, Michigan. Where else we been? Uh, a little bit of everywhere. We want to thank y'all for showing up and showing out. We had sold out shows. And I still be shocking me. Like I be like, that it shocks me a little bit. But I appreciate y'all. Um, everybody's been coming out and rocking with us. And I want to thank y'all for that. Rock Soul really appreciates you. Shout out to my whole Rock Soul family that goes on the road, the band, everybody that leaves and sacrifices, uh, you know, to come out, leave their families. We thank you for that. Big ups to what just went down in Atlanta, a woman that I lose. It was really big. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, our bishop, our friend, uh, Sarah Jakes, Sarita Jakes, she's my favorite. Um, we, it, was, it was amazing. We had a blast. So if there's any woman that's watching right now that have never been to Woman That I Lose, which has changed to Woman Evolve, you shouldn't miss it. it. It blessed me in a major way. Me and my mom were able to hit the stage and we had a good time. Um, and I think that is about it for, shout out to Beyond Expectations for always doing our parties, coming through, setting up for us. As you can see, we got our baby behind us. No crowns in the castle. We were not able to promote our book because of Color Purple. And we were a bit hurt. Shout out to my king for always holding me down, making the sacrifices for purple. And now I'm going to have to make the sacrifices because you're about to leave me. But we got each other. And now we're going to make sure that the world gets to read what God gave us to give to you guys. What we can't do in Taylor Talks. We can't sit as long as we would like to, but we put it all in that book. So we're going to be tapping on some of that tonight. Uh, shout out to DJ Sean Nice on the ones and twos, nicely, you know what I'm saying? Nicely, The after party will be on Twitch tonight. So we get kicked off now of Facebook and Instagram when we do the, the party, when we go live. So please, y'all, y'all know that the after party is like a big thing that we do with us Taylor Talk family. And you can go on Twitch. Tell them what, 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 what they need to do. Because I, can, I, can, I don't mind shaking the camera up. So when we get done, I can pin so it. So we can pin it. Okay. I'll pin so, it, yeah. and then you all just hit the link, and then the party keeps on going like we normally do. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. Shout out to Dorikis. Shout out to me. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Shout out to Dorikis. And last but not least, I want to shout out all our Salute First family, all of the kings that have been joining along with my king, doing some amazing things. Shout out to all our young people down in New Orleans. What's the name of the schools? What up, Cecile? Yeah, Cecile, you know, uh, <clears throat> Principal Shane, the whole school board, uh, State Representative Kim Brass. A lot of people moved a lot of mountains so that we could do something that is long overdue. So just imagine for a moment, every male from sixth grade to 12th grade, when they first come to school, they take the Salute First E1 training program. It is a blessing, it is an incredible challenge, but we have men around the country who are joining arms with us, onboarding you know, a powerful board and C-suite team so that we can get our hands around this issue of uh, false perceptions of manhood, toxic masculinity, uh, false senses of identity, but also empower uh, every male possible with financial literacy and, and putting them in position for long-term career employment. That is the mission. We want to reverse the statistics. With God's grace, we will do that. And um, we want to stop the violence. Um, I, I, it is no coincidence that the Most High is planting us first in the, the state of Louisiana 
We have a meeting coming up with the mayor. We're going to work through some things. So just keep this mission in prayer. It is definitely uh, a ministry, and it is a huge undertaking. But we have to do whatever we can possible to save the lives of these individuals. So salute to the whole Salute First Squad, everybody down in Louisiana, uh, everybody in the prisons as well. Um, beginning next year, our program will be and potentially uh, a million tablets around the country. Um, so that, that is our desire is to keep pumping out content that's impactful, um, that really changes lives, and brother, lovingly confront these brothers. Like, it's taste, we can't keep tiptoeing. Anybody that knows me know I go straight for the gut, and everybody who comes on board is willing to do the same. So Salute First officially, officially launches in two weeks, and uh, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. And I'm so proud of you. If there's any women out there that's watching right now, and you have sons, um, because you know the times are changing, times are changing, and social media, um, what's the Oculus thing that the kids are so addicted? Sean, does your baby have an Oculus? Good. No matter if he had one, he would be addicted. Is now is that on purpose? <laughs> See that? I forgot. That See? quick. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he he has his moments. I'll put it like that. You know, he get into something then it's like, all right, I'm over it. So, you know, we just kind of let him That's actually good. Run with it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cuz a lot of these kids get addicted to that stuff. Yeah. And then you also have a lot like when Ken came home. And y'all already know I'm a cry baby, but I have a big heart for it people period, especially the youth, but when Ken came home and was telling me about some of these young people and the stories that they were telling him and a lot of the killings that were going on in New Orleans, um, I definitely was like, I, I, I definitely got to turn up my prayer life to keep my husband covered because what he's doing, the enemy is very upset about. He, the enemy desires to snatch our youth, especially our young men. So to any women that's watching, a woman that's watching this right now and you have a son, and um, you are looking for a program, not just because it's my husband, it's a very good program to teach our, our young black men especially, um, to, re to reteach them what we've been taught, that's, that's totally wrong. So salute to you, honey. I'm taking you out of town tomorrow. I really am. All right, it's been fun tonight, man. Y'all hold it down. <laughs> We're going out of town. We're going out of town tomorrow because at the end of the day, I know what it feels like to carry so much weight on your shoulders, especially when it comes to being a blessing to other people. You understand what I'm saying? I know what it feels like when you step outside of your house, when you have children and you have a family, but you're going out to, to be a blessing to other families and other households. I know what that feels like. So when my husband comes home, I'm the first one to, to lift him up. And I've been seeing him go really, really hard. We've been going hard together, but I've, this, I've been doing a little stage thing. You know what I'm saying? I get out there and I, you know what I'm saying? I do my little thing, thing. But my baby is starting something that is fresh. It's a newborn baby. And what the world says we can't do, he's going out and he's doing. So I'm going to take care of my man. I think my man. Don't call me. Don't text me. Don't Please FaceTime don't, because you will not get an answer. Yeah, right. I think I'm done with... I just want to shout all our people out. Oh, God, no, wait. I got to say the people up at the W in Atlanta, I have to do this. I know this is, they, y'all took such good care of all of us. If you go to ATL, Shouty, and you looking for a spot to go to, go to the W. What was her name? Katisha? Katisha, thank you for that massage. Thank you for pouring into my life. Thank you for allowing your son to bring me tea and honey and little stuff that I wasn't even trying to bother y'all. But y'all were amazing, so thank you. We have to thank shout you, out Katisha. people who take care of us. I want to say thank you, Katisha, too, because ain't no Kevin or no Kurt or no Craig going to give my wife no massage in the first <laughs> place. So, <laughs> so Katisha, I want to say salute. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, Captain. Nah. <laughs> oh, speaking it. of W, Women's Expo. Um, we will be doing a couple cities uh, with the book promo, you know, doing some, you know, uh, what do you call it, keynote speaking and then book signing and 
touching the people. We had a great experience down in Atlanta, so we're partnering with the Women, Women's Expo to take this to a couple of different states, so stay tuned for those bulletins to come out. Do you have those? Dallas, we're going to go to Dallas in October 22nd. I love Dallas. So many dates with so many companies. Jersey. 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 29th. So if there's anybody from Jersey on here, we'll be there on the 29th. Going back, back to, to Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida on the okay. 5th of November. Nice I know there's a couple others pending, but we're just trying to make sense of everything. Our family is going in different directions sometimes. Like Kezi's here, Kezi's there. She loves to travel. Um, <clears throat> but as best possible, you know, we're going to try to hit as many cities um, and make contact and have fun with this book. You know, again, Color Purple is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I am, I, I, I think there's been two things that I've watched you do that I was the most proud of this movie because you killed, you killed. And it's not just about the movie. You didn't, you didn't allow CD to come home. Aww. And I really appreciated that, you know, cause that role to have the code switch and that capacity to come home. And, and I ain't gonna lie to you. I made it hard for her to play CD. I know I did. Cause every day I'm telling you, you beautiful, you great. You know what I mean? You gorgeous and then she, you gotta go on set and be something that's the opposite. No, you made it, no, thank you for that. Oh, word. Yeah, because the first time I played Celia on Broadway, that was hard, because I went home to that voice by myself. I went home to that voice in bad relationships. So it just made it even worse. I wasn't having that. I thank you, you know baby. <clears throat> that moment, and when you sang with the, uh, uh, the orchestra, the Kennedy, the Kennedy Center, Kennedy Center. <laughs> and it's more precious to me, because y'all didn't get to see it. <laughs> You know Somebody what I mean? I had to share a lot with my Kevin wife, Kevin. so that that was a sacred situation. If you wasn't in the building, then you know, so that one what you did was just incredible. You know, stand there flat foot and sing with all those pieces. But the fact that it was, it it, it 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 evaporated. You know, nobody can see it again. You can't repost it. Like it was a very sacred moment. You know, because I didn't have to share that with the world. Thank you. It's you know something I think I want to bring back. You know what I'm saying? We kind of did it with the Christmas thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. so now that we got that out the way, so we have to shout out our people, and it's probably going to be more sponsors, more people coming along that we want to show some love to. Again, beyond expectations, straight up. Y'all be killing, man. Y'all be killing. Y'all murdered my baby the baby shower. shower. And then after that, the baby called them to do his cousin's baby shower. Like, you guys are dope, and it's a family. It's, it's a family thing that I... I tend to, to really cherish because you don't see that a lot. And your sister is really doing her thing. She's such a sweetheart, so thank y'all. We'll be doing more things together. All right. What's the problem over there, boys? Nothing? <laughs> huh? Multitasking. I had somebody to ask me the question. They were like, why no crowns in the castle? Yeah. Why no crown? What do you what what do y'all mean by no crowns? And I get people to ask me that actually a lot. Because let's use Mr. Ray for example. Mr. Ray is our driver. Shout out to Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray. Even though he's a bit of a race car driver, we love you, Mr. Ray. You could slow down a little bit though, because you'd be scaring us. But um you take good care of us. Mr. Ray asked us a question when we got on the, uh, the Sprinter the other day. Boom. Okay. Yeah, you were in the airport, Trav. So when we got on the Sprinter, he just asked us out the blue, like, how did he say it? Paraphrasing, he basically was saying, how do we not allow the travel, the lights, the energy to consume us or impact our home or our marriage? And it, it kind of evolved from there. Yeah. And all of our questions came so easy that I believe, I almost felt like Mr. Ray thought we was lying. <laughs> Straight up, because he just, and he had this look on his face. So the both of us were just kind of like, well, it's easy. And he kept saying, how? And I was like, well, one, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So the way we do things is totally different. Two, 
our family comes first. Before all of this, our family comes first. Three, this is just what we've been called to do. So we come out here and do it, and we just go back home and get back to our real life. So he's like, so who drives y'all around at home? Me and Ken started laughing. And that's what he said. He said, but y'all don't do your own grocery shopping. So you, <laughs> I was like, Ray, 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 yeah. Ray. He was serious, though. Yeah. He was like, so who drive? I was like, well, we both got license, Mr. Ray. <laughs> We drive ourselves, and actually, if you ever get tired, me or Travis will take this thing over for you, okay? Guess it's who does our grocery shopping. We told him, we do. What's something else he asked? How do we keep our kids humble? He said, so Keziah, he asked us what kind of car we drive. And so we answered. And he asked us, was Keziah, like, kind of aware of the, what kind of car we drive. Oh, because I know it doesn't have a TV or not. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> no. And I said, actually, Mr. Ray, my son isn't really caught up into that either. Now, my 21-year-old knows about it, but as you can see, Travis and Dorica's knows too, and Nice knows, and she's not really caught up into that stuff either. And that's because we didn't really present it in a way of like, this is what you gotta have, this is, I think what we presented was love, love, peace, God, God first, go after your dreams, but your dreams don't have to be, you ain't gotta be a rapper, you ain't gotta be a singer, you ain't gotta be a YouTuber, you ain't gotta be like, whatever your passion is, go after and do it in love, treat people right, and people will treat you right, right? So, I'ma ask you the question, I'ma interview you tonight, why no crowns in the castle? Well, like, <clears throat> you better be prepared too, cause I'm a good interviewer. And they got some questions too, so don't let any let them slip slip away, bro. Um, no, no crowns in the castle is important because I know we've watched single handedly different relationships, marriages, dating couples, engaged couples in the in the industry, whether it's music, af athletics, movies, anything in the entertainment sphere. If you take that energy to your house. <clears throat> you know, that, that that person already has to share you with the world, um, has to, you know, be in, in, in co-partnership with society and this, you know, silent agreement, you know, that society makes with certain people. We're going to lift you up. We also reserve the right to tear you down with 30 days notice. You know what I mean? Um, it can be a lot. The only place you can find solace and peace and serenity is being able to disconnect from that. So it doesn't matter if you're an entertainer or whether you're a doctor or you have your bachelor's or you know you, you, you have your master's in this, that, to the third, or you're a very successful entrepreneur. That's what you do. That's not who you are. And sometimes we raise what we do up in arguments. We raise what we do when we're trying to back out of corners of accountability. We raise up these, these facades of these things that we do but never dealing with the true essence of who we are. So no crowns in the council for us is saying yes. When we walk out that front door, she know who she is. I know who I am. I'm gonna say that again. When we walk out that door, she knows who she is. I know who I am, not what we do. Yeah. Okay, what we do is only encountered when we run into somebody else or we have to show up for work. But as we come back and forth and enter and out of this house, it's about knowing who we are, not what we do. So no crowns in the castle means what happens if you start letting what you do become the identity of your household? <laughs> that is a very dangerous place to be yeah. because then your household and the inner workings of your supposed to be harmonious atmosphere is contingent upon social opinion. Yeah. This has to be a place where social opinion can't penetrate me, a place where social opinion doesn't distract me from my sense of self-worth and identity to where I can raise my kids and love on my wife. Because if I, if I bring what I do home, I'll be trying to be a chauvinist. I'll be trying to get you up under my thumb. I will be letting certain insecurities or whatever and toxic masculinity run my house because that's what the, that's what the world will celebrate me for. But when, I rem when I'm constantly reminded of who I am and I look at you and I see who you are, it keeps me humble to how I'm supposed to operate in spite of all those things. So that was the beginning of it. Now, inside of that, <laughs> that's what we basically are letting you do, is we're saying, we're on Taylor Talks right now. You see Kendo and Fantasia. You look at us through a certain lens. That book allows you to peel beyond that lens to see how the man who knows who he is 
and the woman who knows who she is deals with real life ish blended families you know dealing with you know crooked business people you know dealing with insecurities and, and and having moments of being unsure within ourselves how do we overcome those how do we handle balance now that we have so many different businesses doing different things how do we check ourselves uh two alphas one name because you're a giant and i'm a giant we knew that from the I first time we met <clears throat> climb that tree I wanted to. I wanted to jump. Timber. In I like to climb that. Okay, go ahead. I wanted to actually suck Kendall about what you were just saying. There are a lot of people, listeners, whether it be couples or married people, that subject of turning that person off when you come home. How do you know that that person is? Because most people don't know that that person is still on. And you got two partners that you got one partner that's trying to tell the person that you haven't turned off, but when you're that person, you can't tell that you, sometimes you can't identify or recognize that you still on. It's all about a safe space. I think that's the most dangerous thing when it comes to this power couple tag. <coughs> Excuse me, because you're marrying like they did back in the day, like Bridgerton or something crazy like that, where you're, 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 you're joining for power. Whoop. Okay. You're joining for power. So when you start thinking of power couples, we love to see these big name couples link up together because it represents a, 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 a multiplication of power. But the most powerful people have the greatest weaknesses. The most powerful people have the deepest traumas. You understand what I'm saying? So in order for me to turn off this title that I carry, I need to feel safe. Because sometimes people dive into their work or dive into their kids or dive into service, even do dive into volunteering because <clears throat> they, uh, I want to say this the right way. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 okay. At the end of the day, right, in me and my wife's relationship, it took years for us to truly feel safe. Because no matter what the world threw at my life, my wife, she always knew I could stand flat foot and sing and blow this joint down, and then I can push that away from me. But in marriage, I'm drawing closer to you. I'm getting away from the noise. It's getting quieter. It's getting more still. There's less people. There's less stuff to hide behind. So marriage is supposed to be a safe place, and that's supposed to be the source of the power. So when you start linking up because so, it's going to look good on IG, <laughs> where's your safe place? Where's your safe place? We're all looking for that safe place. But when we get into an argument and we don't feel safe, we remind you of what I do. If I know I made a mistake and I feel like you're going to lord it over me, instead of just taking accountability and apologizing and humbling myself, it's time to let me remind you I got a master. Let me remind you what I do. Yeah. So it's about a safe place. And I will say most, I, I won't speak for myself, and, and if there's any women on here who want to be tr truly honest, we... We tend to go there, especially if we feel like our back is up against the wall with a man. Especially if we know we go get us. Before I met you, I held my stuff down, took care of my own children, right? That, and I'm not. We're not just talking about celebrities. We're talking to, about everybody. The roundaway, because I'm. I look at myself as the roundaway girl. I don't really like look at myself like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm from High Point, North Carolina. I can get out and kick it with all my homegirls. I'm talking about doctors, dentists, lawyers, nurses, nail techs, hairstylists, makeup artists, uh, the, my girl that make Crocs. All of us, when you start to do your thing and you start to ride, and we meet some men, it can be very intimidating. The first spat you get in, we're going we gonna to suit up, right? And it's not right, but it's our safe place. Until we find somebody that does not make us feel like, you know, we got to, what Ken used to say to me when we, when we first met, he used to say, I, just, I act like a man sometimes, but I was the only girl. I was raised with three brothers. I saw how dudes could play. So you couldn't play me. And if I want, like, if you came in, I, I'm going to come out. But that is something that we got to learn how to not use and fall back, but it has to feel safe. It's got to be consistent because if a woman, <clears throat> you know, I can think about Does you. Does that make sense? You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm great piggyback. I can think about like you. I can think about my mother. The, the dynamic of 
intimacy, community, relationship, family, it, it, it has an original design. The man was supposed to take a certain part of that responsibility and shoulder that, and the woman was supposed to take her part. You know, the, the man is the disciplinary structure, vision, vision. The woman is the nurturer, the killer, the glue, the love. <clears throat> so when a man is absent, hence salute first. When a man is absent, the woman has no choice but to do her best to fill that void. She don't want to carry that because that diminishes and drains the true essence of her unique giftings and abilities. So with that safe space, she's also looking for a certain level of consistency. So it might be like, all right, I'll let you take over, you know, dealing with the car. I'll let you have that for a while, but don't discipline my child. Ooh. Okay, we move forward. Because I'm testing your consistency. I owe it to myself. Then after a while, it's like, okay, you can start making more of the business decisions, right? And don't discipline my child. That's a sacred space. But when a woman feels like you truly have a best interest at heart, that you can deal with her good, her bad, and her ugly, that you can also leave your crown <coughs> at the door and no crowns in the crib. Now I will let you have every part of me, which is my child, which is my heart, which is, you know, what I pray about, what my dream's about. But that's certain, that, that stuff has to be earned. And, and a lot of women, unfortunately, because certain men, I'm not, y'all know I don't mail bash, but we talking about data. A lot of men abort the position. And women have to wear those two hats until they find somebody who's going to put it on and never take it off. And then there's a lot of men who don't. And then there's a lot of women who still Y'all know I, I take over my girls, but we run good men away. You know what I'm saying? Because we still, it's hard for us to let that part of us go. And it's like PTSD, and you don't want to, you, you, you don't want to deal with that. So you're still wearing your crown, right? But you still like this guy, but you won't, you won't take that that thing off and allow him to be king and you be queen. So, you know what that's got me thinking about? And anytime you get a good question, jump in. Y'all can shoot any questions that y'all want. It has me just thinking about how contaminated the dating game is. That's what I, that's what I was going to ask you to the question that I just asked you. So, let's say you're in your safe place. Are you on the verge of your safe place? Are you trying to find your safe place with your partner? Um, and you recognize that your partner has walked in in his or she ego. How do you address this? What is the, because you know, because um, you know sometimes we carry the same words that we carry with our friends. I'm going to check you. I'm going to, I'm going to get you together. How do you address, most people feel like they can't, even some people that's in their, in their safe place feel like they still can't quite address their partner. Like how do you address? I, I want to just jump in on this one. Because I think that that's still, I think that's something that you learn as you go. I don't think that that's, that's a, ever a solid answer. And Sean, you're married, so come on, tap into this. It, 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 my thing is, I don't think that that's ever something that stays the same as we grow in marriage. It's eight years in for me and you. It's what for you and sis? Nine? I think as we grow, and as a woman, I'm going to speak on my behalf, dealing with, with my husband. Because when you're, when you're dealing with, with certain things like that, you, ha you got to go into that very gentle. Because I have them. You have them. You have them. We have them. Now that I am growing and doing my, my own therapy, my own, I'm starting to, and, and growing a business, my husband is no different than how I handle everybody that works with me or works around me. My husband is no different from me walking into the doctor's office. In now, some people would get into an argument, but I don't. I tell, if somebody got an attitude, or y'all know how it is now when you roll up to the restaurants and you ordering food, everybody got an attitude. Everybody's pissed, right? You know it's the truth. I choose to handle my husband how I would handle anybody else in the streets. And, and so if I know, and that's the other thing too, you gotta be in tuned. You gotta have on your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes to know what has, what's going on. Like this, wait, something ain't right with my husband, something, okay. I don't know what might be bothering him. I don't know what, what that thing is. Okay, he came in on one or I came in on one. So now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to handle that very delicate. Now, the first thing we want to do is be like, you know what? I'm about to cut shoot from Amazing Grace to a floating opportunity. You can get your, right? You ain't even got to stay here. 
right? But that makes it worse. And that makes him feel like he's not in a safe place in his weak moments. Because we all have weak moments. We're human. That's what I was just about to say. How did you learn? Because you know a lot of, I won't say gender, a lot of people okay. haven't learned how to take yourself out the picture like this. My mate, what's going on with my mate could possibly have nothing to do with me. Yeah. And that, I think that's the hardest part because we, the first thing we do, we think is, what did I do? What did, what did I do? I, what could I do? But as I mentioned, to me, it's growing up outside of him. Therapy, reading books, having the right relationships and friendships. I do believe I have male friends and some girlfriends, so I can go to my male friends. Derek can stay on the phone with me all the time because I need to know, like, because I could be just being a woman, and we always emotion. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I think you have to to pick and choose whether you are married or you are in a relationship with someone. You got to have people around you who believe in your relationship and believe in your marriage and will sit down and cancel you through it because you can really, like, jump and move and make an impulse move. I've done it a lot, for real. And Ken used to be like, what is you even talking about? I'll be on a whole nother. I'll be like, well, you rolled your eyes to the left, to the right, and that made me feel like you didn't want to be together no more. He was like, I was just looking if it was raining outside. That's just how we do. We're human. So I just feel like you got to get outside your head, especially me. I'm a cancer woman. June babies, whoop, 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 whoop. July babies, whoop, whoop. I'm a cancer. So we can think. We can overthink. And that's the good thing about me growing is I'm starting to learn myself. Instead of running from it, I'm starting to be like, yeah, you need to switch that, fix this, da, 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 da. So that it better serves my family, my business, my friendships, and my husband. I think it works not just in a marriage. I think everything surrounding you, we got to sit back and learn how to pause and understand that that's not what it is. Your friend is just going through something. Your coworker is just going through something. Your husband, your wife. So let me be the bigger person and allow my light to shine through today because I'm good today. Now, tomorrow you might have to catch me. But we have to sit back and, and work on ourselves so that we can see the better parts of our partners. Our, 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 you know what I'm saying? That make any sense? You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? You feel me? Yeah. Somebody said, um, I seen a comment that said, I feel like I'm handling it as humble as I can, but sometimes I feel because I'm a woman that is not being received. And they're speaking, I guess they're speaking with their partner. Like they're trying to handle the sit whatever they're going through. They're trying to handle it as humble as she can, but she feel like because she's a woman, he's not hearing her. Well, um, that, that's an interesting space. Of course, we've been there. Um, I think. And that's something we talk about in the book, too. Yeah. Because I, I mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. Very, very few people, we, we're not talking about 16, 18 year olds who just go get a job anywhere they want to get a job, but most people, before they take a job, they do research on that industry. They want to understand what the pay rate is in that industry. They want to know if it's a sustainable industry, is it a career path. Uh, most people who buy a house, they want to make sure they do the due diligence, you know, get all your tests done, all your inspections done, get your roof checked out, make sure ain't no termites. Before people go get a car, they go and check, make sure I get the best price. Let me get several offers. Am I going to get the most for my trade in? How much, <laughs> how much effort and due diligence do we really put into relationships before we give our heart, our secrets, our bodies? Do, do, do we really understand that probably two out of three people have gone through some kind of trauma, abuse, uh, molestation, rape, and uh, been 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 lied about, backstabbed, publicly embarrassed, or scrutinized, or ostracized in their family. Like we all put on makeup. You know, hers may be foundation, mine may be a a, a, a Carolina Panther hat. You know, we we all put on something to cover up something. But it seems like we don't take the more strategic approach, I hate the word strategic because it's a relationship, we don't take a more serious approach of what we are getting ourselves into. 
As long as he got a nice chest, he got a good job, his credit score is above 640, he's a catch. That man watched his mama get abused all his life. You don't think that's going to spill over into his demonstration as a husband? You know, you like her because she got her hair done, and you know what I'm saying? She poking out and everything. Okay, you chasing lust, but do you understand how many times she's been let down by men and that you going to have to wear that on your chest until she gets safe? That she ain't going to see you? Till time and consistency helps her process all the all those other images, like we gotta really get more into the space of talking, and caring, and being understanding, and being vulnerable, and creating a safe space because we're all carrying something. And and, and until we can share that with each other, the first date we had is we. I don't know why we did that. I was gonna that. say. I was gonna say. We, go ahead. Nah, 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 nah. I was piggyback because I was finna challenge you until you said that. When we met each other, we were very, very honest with each other. Me and Dorica's had this conversation, too. We're living in a time now where I want everybody to understand you're not going to meet nobody that ain't been through nothing. Period. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> now, you can meet somebody that's going to come in acting like, you know, them the ones you be like, man... A year down the line, you got a what? A child? Where, right? But you're not going to meet anybody that has not been through anything or come with some scars. Period. So, one, the, le the list that you have, <laughs> you got to burn it up. Because it's, it's never going to happen. Now, what we do recommend is that you be honest with the person when you meet them and hope. Fingers crossed that they be honest with you. Because we got married in three weeks. Woo! Why you ain't drop a bomb? It sounds romantic it's, until you until you No, 45. that's why I said drop the bomb. Three weeks. <laughs> till you 45 days in and you, understand? you don't know their love language or you don't know where the landmines right, are. Right, but that's why I'm saying we have got to learn how to open up again and learn how to, we be ready to run immediately with the first thing we see. But why not start building a relationship? I'm going to always promote it. There may be some people on here that say that's not my thing. If it's not, I understand, but... I believe that once you start building a relationship with the, with the most high, that he's going to give you everything you need for the person that he brings into your life. If they've been abused, if they come with felonies, if they come, like, it, it, whatever, it, whatever the case may be, he's going to equip you with what you need once you put on your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. Because if you keep running, you're going to end up by yourself for the rest of your life. If you're trying to find somebody with a clean slate, that's just my thing. Let me talk on the other side because I totally agree. But what's more important, I notice that every time, you know, hmm, let me set this up right. Come on, let's cook. I'm the, ready the, to the, play the, with the, you tonight. The, the <laughs> <laughs> okay, my mic on. Y'all know I don't care nothing about nothing. Now, I done dodged a whole lot tonight. You know what I'm saying? I can say something right now. Y'all know my ro my romance is set. Respect. <laughs> um, the one of the greatest things that I, I've learned I have learned to love about God, right, is as a man, He's gonna show me myself. He's gonna always if if you if you approach Him in sincerity and in truth, the first thing He's gonna show you is you. Why that's so important is because in relationships, God can be your anchor and your compass because a lot of times we can drain our mate, expecting them to give us something only he can provide. Your relationship cannot crystallize your self-identity. Your relationship is not designed to heal you of your trauma. Your relationship is supposed to be a safe place where you can process through your trauma, yourself. With you doing the work, with you having the therapy, you having the conversations, you having the self-reflective moments. We get into these relationships and we 
have these silent expectations that we impose on the other person because we never had a conversation. Wow. He said, you know what? You want to take advantage of me. You want to cuss me out every day, be moody, never appreciate me, or overlook everything I do. I agree to that. I agree to that. I agree to that. <laughs> so, therefore, your, your unspoken expectation is trespassing and it's imposing. Because those are certain things that we're supposed to be giving to our father because nine times out of ten, they happen before you ever even met old girl. Ugh. You just met old girl. And you want her to pay the taxes for your seventh grade boyfriend, your eighth grade boyfriend, your, 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 your daddy leaving your mama, and, and, you, and it, it, he's supposed to pay all them taxes? It's not right. Ugh. So that is the beauty that I have found. Anytime I've been upset about my wife and I enter into prayer, the first thing he showed me is my flaws, my weaknesses, my frailty. And the more I start to become humble, the more I see her in the likeness that he sees her himself. So we got to get out of this place, man, of trying to superimpose our healing needs on somebody else. Why? Because they, they going through their own trauma too. Yeah. So both of y'all sitting in this relationship imposing your emotional will on each other <laughs> with these unspoken expectations and these penciled in agreements and then you wonder why it ain't work out. But then two minutes later you on Instagram goals. <laughs> it's the truth and we talk about it in our book because I ran Kindle away like that. We split up. What? I hate talking about it. you talk about it. So I know when we I, I know when we were in the studio doing the audio. She be like, book, yeah, we split up. Now. We like, did no. I mean, I'm good with it now, but you know that broke my heart. But in all fairness, it was it plenty of times she's supposed to let me. So are we good now? We no, we good. I'm just saying, like, she ain't going nowhere though, because I'm gonna kill you. What anyway. I'm saying, I'm gonna kill you too. We, I don't know which we'll one be I'm gonna kill first. But I don't know which one. Thank we'll hey, you. Know, one more. It's gonna sound just like. But listen, stop that, baby. We don't want to. So listen, real talk. When we met, even though we talked about a lot of things and I told him a lot about my scars and what I went through, I had fasted for seven months. Those fears started coming back up because I could not, I couldn't understand why he was loving me like he was loving me. And I was almost scared, like, mm -mm. no, faithful, loyal, who? Subconsciously, without your approval, you would test me. I did. I would test him all the time. And in my head, I was saying, I'm just going to leave before he leaves me. And he left. Yeah. Because I, I kept doing it, y'all, over and over and over again. Most of y'all know my story. You know the stuff I went through. I, I was like, nah, what man coming in? Nah, who tells somebody they're beautiful every morning? No way. Who's every day? Coming even when she mad, she don't speak. <laughs> she might I, be mad, not even speaking to me. Now you gonna get this beautiful today, though? I could not. I bet you that. I couldn't understand it. So all my fears started rising back up and these little voices was like, nah, you ain't good enough for nothing like that. Mm. You done been through this, you done <laughs> been through that. But then we talk about this in the book as well, but then when you came back to get me, then I was suspect. Remember in the book, I, I, I explained that when she came back, I started testing her. Because now I'm like, nah, the, the way you done did me, I need to make sure you really going to be here. So let me tell so you. Then I started and applying pressure. Y'all have to read the chapter because we can't talk about all of it. But let me tell you how I went back. I humbled myself because I, I was wrong. My mouth was reckless. My mouth was reckless. How we get on this? Again? Was this a question? No, this is good. This is good because you started talking about, we, we just started talking about how, like, we expect people to read our minds instead of saying, look, I'm insecure. I, you know, you know what I'm saying? We don't do that. We go in it dressed up. All of our pictures on Instagram look good. We smile and we look strong. We look happy. When really, we're jacked up. You get what I'm saying? You get your home, you take your hair out, your lashes come out, you <laughs> pop your dog on nails off, your butt come off. I, 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 how your whole butt come off? Uh, Kendo uh -huh. Lamar. You know you're in trouble when I call you about I hair. thought it said Taylor Talk. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the lies that we promote. We got on that because that is true. And I was guilty of that. And I was not afraid to, to share that in the book. And so I decided to humble myself. I knew that my husband loved chocolate. So you know the little chocolate uh, 
flowers they make in the store, where they look like a flower, but it's like a whole bunch of chocolate. I went and bought chocolate. And I remember driving to his office. And I was like, okay, God, I need you to tell me what to say, because I ain't never done nothing like this before. <laughs> and what if he don't want to see me? What if he tell the lady at the front desk, don't let me back? I was like, I'm still going nice. I was like, I'm going. My grandmother had just passed. And it's, I, I put on a uh, the Walls group. Uh, I'll never let you go. Something about that song was just like feeding my spirit. And of course, it was to the father, but, it, I, but, but the father had given me my husband, so it felt like a love song as well to my husband and to the father. I drove there. I went in. I'm such a crybaby. As soon as I opened the door, I immediately started crying and said, it's Kendra here. <laughs> and everybody started coming up to me and was like, we love you. Because it was my fault. We, I, I, we talk about that in the book. Go get the book. Because it was very embarrassing what I did. It was embarrassing. I'm done I embarrassed worse, though. Like it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I embarrassed you in front of the whole world. So I sat down, and I don't know. God just started speaking through me. I gave him the chocolates, and we went on a date. She cheated too, man. She brought Kit Kats, nice. Now if she'd have bought a Milky Way. I'd have been like, I'll call you, right? But I'm just kidding. I he said that to, no to say this. Girl. You all the chocolate I need, girl. I had realized he had realized the things that I was dealing with, but he was willing to love me past those things and is still willing to love me past some things that I'm going to deal with and I'm still in there with you. You get on my nerves a lot. I know I do, too. You do. Yeah. But I love you and I know who you are, so... Yeah. Boom. So check it. I'm gonna hear what you Understand that marriage is a trauma unit. Ah. Ah. I like it. Marriage, intimate relationship, long term commit, it's a trauma unit. And the more comfortable you get with showing your scars and your wounds, the more comfort comfortable the other person will become. And humility can be birthed and trust in a safe space. But if you keep going to your degree, if you keep going to your promotion, if you keep going to your portfolio, you'll end up causing more wounds mm. than ever getting down to exposing the ones that were there in the beginning. Mm. Remember that. Tra marriage is a trauma unit, man. We're both hurting. You're both feeling. You're both sensitive. You're both, you know, working it get better at taking constructive criticism, going back to the lady saying, I'm trying to get through to my husband, you know, so on and so forth, you know. Maybe, maybe it's a trauma. Maybe it's a weakness or insecurities that's preventing him from hearing your heart. And it could give you another angle of intimacy to get what you want in the long run, but actually expose you to a whole new room of his identity that you weren't even looking for in the first place. Pray about it. I tell God I'm Kindle all the time. You know, like, God, you get him, Lord. You just get him, because he... He keep on blessing me. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go into my question, because um, I've seen this a lot, what is the name of the book? I think we've said it about three times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody no crowns in the castle. Can you pass me one right quick? Or no put crowns it in the castle. And where can people? Or where can people get it? Books everywhere. Walmart, Barnes yeah. and Nobles, uh, online. Uh, books a million. Your, your auntie got one. <laughs> uh. Yo, straight up, Sean Nice sent us, a, sent us a picture and was like, yo, I mean, I'm reading mine. And that respect, you know what I'm saying? I always feel like God gave it. And we, as honest and real as we are right here, we were honest and real in that book. And there were times where we were not talking after we was writing with our writing. I remember one session we had with Hillary. We almost had a full-grown argument. Oh, my and, God. And, and the topic that day was. Oh, I can't remember. Um, All I know is you, I put you out of the room. We did our zone with Hillary in two different rooms. <laughs> <laughs> now, the whole time we've been uh, writing this book, we both sitting together. We snugged up. I'm rubbing her belly. 
This day she was in her room and I was in my office. I only think neither one of us was looking at the camera. <laughs> we couldn't no. even zoom in peace. Do you think she could tell? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, because we don't, we're not without good a friends. Doubt. We don't face. But the, the topic of that day or something was about agreeing, agreeing to disagree or something. We ended up having an argument about the agreeing to disagree. But, but it's, it's real. We're human. <laughs> we didn't write a book trying to be right. No. We, we wrote one trying to be honest. And, 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 and seeking for right. Somehow, somehow has a funny way of always proving us wrong. Mm. Seeking right, fighting over right, always has a way of proving us wrong. There, 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 there have been several times where I was right about the facts, but I didn't get to hold my wife that night. So right, being right ain't always comfortable. You know what I mean? So we didn't try to take the path of being, because I'd rather be wrong and next to that thump, 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 instead. Ken. You had one uh, earlier. That just hey nice. If you don't get right with nobody else, but stay here with me. Stay here with me. Yes. Lisa, yes. y'all having too much fun. Yes, yeah, we are. We are. Come here, let me tell you something. Oh God. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna stop playing with you. Oh. Them Thanksgiving hams came early. <laughs> Look, nice. Hey, nice. I'm going to take this top button off, but you better dog on. Baby, don't call him hams. They are hams. No, I'm leaning out. That ham ain't going nowhere, though, and I don't even eat pork. <laughs> <laughs> mama! I get him for my mama. Mama okay. going to go something. Yes. yes. <laughs> you better. So. <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink. I, I want to jump backwards, and then I want to jump forward. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, bro. Uh, this little piggy ready to go out of town. Sean, <laughs> y'all stop. Respect, bro. Come on, come on, y'all get back, right? Yes. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us. <laughs> so I want to jump backwards and then I want to jump forward. Okay. Um. I'm gonna do Kindle, so boom. <laughs> <laughs> so boom, you know. <laughs> okay, so I wanna I wanna touch you back on the scars, um, scars, um, baggage, because I don't want people to be confused that deal with anything, because there's somebody in a situation now, and there's a lot of people who are going into situations and allow themselves to be in situations with people that they feel like we're going to get there. How do you distinguish, how, how, how do you know between like this person is worth it and this person is not? Because you know, we talked about the scars, you know, me and your conversation, I was just like, oh, I don't want to deal with nobody else who have baggage, you know. I don't want to deal with another project. But sometimes we might miss it. That could have been the person. And sometimes we end it with a person that's never, that kind of not going to come out. You know, we all have those friends who's in a situation. You, you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how to know, like, you, you dealt with guys. I've been with you, bef um, you know, yeah. before Kendall. How did you know, like, uh, I can handle these scars? Boom. <laughs> I got to flip it. Boom. Boom. <laughs> my bad. Man, that's your thing? That's my, yeah. We got to find all of our Taylor talks <laughs> so I can get to <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Hey, 321 be busting. <laughs> um in in, in, in the program, I, I hope this I hope this lands. In the E1 program, we have a section there where we talk about the four seasons of potential. Right? And so we talk about the infant stage where someone shows signs of potential, but they don't know it. That's like Dallas when he used to shoot the basketball. He you know, we see it in them kids as she walks on her toes. She might be a little ballerina. That's just when potential is notice it, it reveals itself then you go into the adolescent stage of potential now this is when your potential is clearly shown but you can't see it but others can and this season is usually when the old heads take advantage of the young yg's and have them run packs and pimps start whispering and putting oil in young girls ears and taking advantage of because or, or people try to get young athletes to sign contracts early or because we see your potential, but you don't. You're in the adolescent stage. Yeah. Then you go into the 
uh, the adult stage, right? <clears throat> the adult stage is when you see the potential you possess in yourself. And this is one of the most dangerous places to be. Because as you get a grip on learning how to manage your potential, how do you test it out? You start taking advantage. You start using it to your advantage. You realize that, oh, they feeling this. Oh, they like that. Oh, they getting with this. Until you get to the mature stage of potential when you realize how it benefits the world around you. And once you see that, you begin to learn how to protect your potential, nurture it, and cultivate it. Flip it to trauma. It's important to know what season that person is because too often, like a rodeo show, we hang Can we get a time to read on set? <laughs> you read it out. I know Boom. somebody got one of them pop up books. Hey, can I do that? Boom. But you can't, no, you're going in the wrong place. What? Right before you get ready to lay your point out, you gotta be like, okay, boom. So when you get ready to start, as soon as you ready to start your, what you get ready to do? Like, okay. Fighting to not lose her father. 
Boom. Snap, just watering it down. It's like, it's like it's, 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 I don't even know how to snap. You know that. No, it's just it's just a motion, but not without the sound. Yeah. Boom. I had said that when we were at Woman Got Up Loose. I said that and I heard the whole room go, hmm. Because we were so busy talking about relationships, what kind of man we need to find, what kind of, and I just decided to speak from a place that I've been before, Queens. And I was like, but ladies, you, we can't find a man until we heal from some of the trauma that we've been through because we're not going to do anything but either run him away or deal with the same stuff you've seen growing up. So that we catch our dude with somebody. Oh, I got to go there. Please don't get mad at me, Queen. Is it worth it? It's worth it. It's worth it. Because we, we, I'm telling you, I've been there before. We can catch our man with a whole nother woman. But you catch him in person. You ain't been there with me. No, I'm yeah, talking about you. Up. I'm talking about that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you damn bread. If I catch you in that, you damn bread. <laughs> Back then, though, I used to go through that, baby. You gotta understand, I was not healed from my stuff. You get it? That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to die loose. I didn't go too deep for my mouth because I didn't know. And I close my eyes so I can say it right. We gotta catch him in person. Catch him on the phone, do the text messages. So y'all remember that time uh, they put it on YouTube. The woman was on the plane with her husband and he had just went through his phone, fell asleep, and she went through it and and, and whooped him on the plane, they put off the plane. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. <laughs> but a lot of times that makes us more attractive to the man. They go both ways. I thought, yeah, there's a lot of brothers out there. Really? Because men be like, yeah, nah, I'm out. Nah, you nah, cheated, girl. Listen, done. we ain't got to say no names right now, but you know what? Right off the rip. She, bad shit, crazy. Period. Tell me about your hair. Tell me about your hair. Tell me about your hair. Tell Can't say nothing. Can't say nothing. Right? Hey, hey, hey. Can't say nothing. It can go both ways, man, because, like, you know. No, but that woman is this, but. He got caught. But that's been way before, way before. Man, men do I not think, play that. I think I to that. Most men, if a woman cheats, when they're done. I done told you, I'm killing you and him. I just don't know which one I'm killing But first. women tend Dude. to allow <laughs> men to do so. We just, it, it makes us love them more, want them more, when we have not dealt with with some of our traumas and dealt with the things that we've been through. So we almost give them passes to be creep. That's why I'm a cook when I go down to Georgia to talk about self-worth, man. Like, Does anybody, the women, can I get anybody to back me up? Some of y'all can go and say no change, some of y'all can say, okay, yeah, I've been there. You can, do you get what I'm saying? Because I've been there. It's like I don't want her to have them. I see the potential in him, and, and, and the man get to cry and put on Oscar Award winning performances. Hold oh, I'm so sorry. For all of you. And you know the first thing they be saying? <laughs> I'm just got an addiction, and I think it can be bad. You be like, what? You didn't realize you, you know? So it, I've seen that happen, and I've been in that place. And we have to stand up for ourselves and know that we're better than that, we're worth more than that. And if, if they don't have no higher power in their life or something that they fear, it's hard to break that out their life and you gotta go and get some things going on. Go ahead, bro. To the real quick, Facebook, everybody says this on Facebook because they kind of said, can you just quickly address the question that I asked? Because they said we did it to Kendall about the, uh, with the question I asked about the scars of knowing when, um, from a man perspective, but knowing we oh. need about the scars, we need to let go. Yeah, I won't. I won't go through the whole journey. I thought yeah. it was pretty. Oh, they just keep saying, we need to um, take him <laughs> at, at the end of the day, um, and, we, and we apologize. We we gonna we gonna do some beta tests. We gonna get it. We gonna get it back flexed. Um, it went out, basically. Yeah, yeah it just went out for a quick second. It's all good, man. Um, and thank y'all. At the end of the day, I was telling them about a, a component of our E1 program where we talk about the four seasons of potential and how important it is to understand what phase or stage of potential that you find yourself in because in 
depending on the case, right, depending on the phase, you could be in a situation where you don't realize your potential yourself. You could be in a situation where your potential is being exploited for somebody else's personal gain at the cost of your suffering. You enter into another phase where you do start realizing your potential, but the only way that you can explore it and and uh, you know uh, you know test it out it usually comes at the cost of somebody else's hurt or pain. Until you reach a mature stage where you know who you are, you know the talents that you possess, you know how they serve the world around you, and then you start to protect, cultivate, nurture, and invest into that potential. With that methodology or perspective, you flip it to trauma. And I would say a lot of women hang on to dudes because yes, you see that potential in them. But you need to be very clear on what phase that he's in. Yeah. And I said, think of his potential like a cake. The girl in junior high, she got to collect and, and, and compile all the ingredients. And then he got rid of her. And maybe she ran for her life. Yeah. Then you got another woman, probably in middle school, high school. She starts putting together the, the ingredients together, stirring them in a bowl. And then he lets her go before she even get the lip spoon. <laughs> then you got somebody else who actually puts it all together, puts it in a beautiful pan. I'm gonna enjoy this cake. This cake got so much potential. He's gonna be with me. And she puts them in the oven. And she can't take the heat. And being with him with his trauma. All those women go through that just for somebody else to be able to take the cake out the oven after he don't realize who he is. Wow. You know, he done found God. <laughs> yeah. He done found a career path. He done got rid of his demons. And so she gets to enjoy the finished product. She gets to enjoy that experience. But what about the other three women who are hanging on to his potential? So potential cannot substitute your protection. You cannot expect his potential to protect you because nine times out of ten, his potential is going to punish you. I'm going to keep it G. I've been there. I've been there. The man I am now with my wife is not the way that I was in the streets or in high school or anywhere else. Because as I was processing and finding my way, finding what works, what doesn't work, who I am, who I'm not, yeah. they got caught up in that hurricane. It goes both ways. Um, you better hear me up before he says man, something. You better hear me up before <laughs> So, okay. So now I'm addressing her with my good eye. <laughs> oh, so now, you have a <laughs> So now I want to speak into uh, Tommy versus like probably the last time you did tell talk to where you are now. And um, do you feel like your prayers have changed? Because, you know, sometimes people pray and pray and pray, and they're so stubborn with their prayers that they haven't realized that maybe I'm, maybe it's time to switch up kind of what I'm praying for. You know, when people want what they want, you can be so selfish that it, it can kind of hurt you, you know. Have your prayers changed versus uh, where you were versus where y'all are now, what you were doing versus what you were doing now, like? Yeah. <clears throat> I think I think your metaphor. I don't know how to do it. Dallas. Dallas comes to us every week that he's with us and he asks for pizza, nuggets, maybe some noodles. Oh, this is what you can do. I think I see. Right. He leaves. He does his thing. He comes back. And he asks for pizza, nuggets, and noodles. Now we doing pretty well. So at the end of the day, Dallas could have, taste, indulge, experience, anything in the world. But all he asks us for is pizza, nuggets, and noodles. Our prayers have had to change. If we're made in his image and we get bored, if we're made in his image and we like spontaneity, and change and excitement. If we're made in his image and we would give our children anything that they would ever ask us within reason as long as they wouldn't bring them harm or distract their destiny. Why do we assume God is not the same way? You don't think God get bored sitting up there sometimes like, you know, I might yeah, like wanting some excitement saying somebody's got so much faith that they're stepping out into the unknown or they got a global mindset 
So the prayers had to change, man, because our life changed. Our desires for life, from life changed. We refuse to continue to live life taking what's given to us, based on what we can be or what we've already done. Measure myself by somebody else when God can do the unthinkable and the imaginable at any point in time. He made that clear in Malachi 3. So yes, I Yeah. And when we come together collectively. Yeah. I'm going to say mine like this. What time is it? We got to wrap it up soon. My parents changed. 9.35. My parents changed because as I grew older, I had to learn how to break religion of the life. I grew up in church. From a little bitty kid. And the things that I grew up on are the things that I've seen had me thinking things had to be a certain way. You couldn't touch this. You couldn't wear this. You couldn't say that. As I started getting older, you guys, and I started reading the word for myself, and I started being attracted to Christ, and I started watching his walk, I started realizing that a lot of things that I grew up in were just trying to say around and stuff you know, about my body. Logistical. Yeah. So I started also realizing that I don't need to ask God for anything in my prayers because he already had it written for me. I am a prayer warrior, so if, it, if, it, if it's, you know, I ask him for things like healing uh, when it comes to certain people or, you know, praying for other people. But as far as asking him for things for me, I don't do that anymore. What I ask him for is his will to be done in my life because I realize that if his will is done in my life, then things are going to go perfectly because he, now I'll still have storms, I'll still go through things, but it's what he's written for my life. So what I've decided to do now, you guys, is more worshiping and thanking him and praising him and you see me doing on my stage so you know I'm not lying. Because I don't need to ask him for anything, I just want his will to be I ask him for more wisdom. That's it. So that while I'm down here on this earth, I have the wisdom and the knowledge to navigate through things that are for me and things that are, I don't have to follow anymore because I've been through a lot of stuff. And he has kept me. He has kept me. I've been through things that people walk up to me and I always say, they say, I cannot believe you made it through that. I went through stuff and it was worldwide and I wasn't even a worldwide artist at the time. <laughs> like, for real, it was like, you would think my album is here and I'm overseas and I'm da, 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 da. The drama was just everywhere, but he kept me. And it was necessary. So now when I go out on my knees, I'm not asking him for a bunch of stuff. Because when I was doing that, he was giving it to me because he loves me, but it wasn't on good ground. I was losing it. It was the wrong people. So sometimes I always tell people, like, stop asking him for stuff. Just ask him to allow his will be done. If it's, if, if it's something you want, for me to have God, you send it my way. And give me the strength and give me the wisdom and give me the knowledge to be able to walk through it strong so that I represent you in the best way that I can. So that your light will continue to shine through me. And that's down to relationships, friendships, business partners. Like, if, if God, I'm going to him first and, and asking him, your will be done in this. If this ain't for me, then take this away from me. The money might sound good. The position might sound like it's on top of the world. But if that's not what you have for me, just take it away from me. That's where I am right now in, 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 in my life, the older that I get. 
I'm gonna fall to my knees and thank him because I'm still here. I got a young lady that I gotta call tomorrow because she's leaving here 22 years old. And we're still here and he's still giving us the opportunity. So we gotta stop going in and making these stupid requests. And learn how to just thank him for being the God that he has been in our lives and keeping us and saving us and holding us in the palm of his hands. And stuff we knew we should have been gone. We should have been locked up, should have been dead. Should have never made it home because I drank too much. Somebody could have slipped so many drink. Any little thing could have happened in these campus. So now we gotta just start falling and just saying, Glory to your name, God, because you've been good to me. If you don't do another thing, if you don't do nothing else, you've done enough. Yeah. I have to take the go with that. I'm sorry. Uh, you, got, you got room. Sorry. Um, make, make sure I'm right with God. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. The older we get, can we ask, does our prayers change? I'm like, yeah. Especially after all I've been through. Yeah, my prayers have changed. Now it's just more worship. I'll be on my stage telling God, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the breath in my body. Thank you that the plane didn't go down. Thank you. And my children still. Yo, that, I, I, you know, we, I don't think we've ever done a challenge. We never put a challenge out there. I, I, I challenge anybody who's been asking the Father for something. You've already asked him. You made your petition, though. What you had to lose, you go for 30 days and just wake up every day and thank him. Yeah. And when you think of that thing that you want to ask him for, just say, Father, thank you. Because he already knows. You already said it. Ain't nothing more worse than when your kid come ask you something and you say no and you say yeah and come ask you again. You're like, yo, yes, and again, my answer going to be no. I just go about your business. Oh, I said no, it is what it is. I ain't changing. Next time, you know. Um, or that kid that doesn't ask you for anything and you know this, that they've been so good in school. Like, and you want to remember something. I know you want something. I know you've seen the game or something. You say, let, me, let me show you something. Yeah, but yeah. I just, I just, again, to do the same thing over and over, you expect different results as defined as insanity. And uh, anything that's saying is kind of productive to some spiritual. I, I would just, I would just challenge to go for a season and, and say thank you. We're not being hypocrites, man, because we, we in the book. We talk about being in some of the most low places when we have money to take trips and we didn't have money to go on these real nice days. So we could have, but it was just it was more more comfortable for us to just go sit and watch the airplanes take off and go to the lake and do little picnics, but we thanked him every single step of the way. Um mm. give it a try. Give it a try. You got me thinking, I'm just and I'm in the zone now, just just Thanking God, like, man, how, how far we come. We started this in COVID, and he kept this during COVID, and he's still keeping us. And me and Sean has had some conversations where he hit me up, like, yo, I don't know. I'm like, hey, man, stand still and know that God, right? Am I lying? Like, yeah, man, we, 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 um, and when I go to my shows now, and they sold out, I'm just like, God, thank you, because it's not about that, but it is, you remember when we were performing, and there was no I said because um, one year I had my staff to um, to write their goals down and things they were praying for and asking God for, and um, we put it in an envelope and we waited to after New Year's to open it. And um, it wasn't so much. We learned later that it wasn't so much about God answering because that's what we that's what we did it for. We did it to see you know who how many things on our list God was going to answer. But what was more um, touching about it was that we started to look at our list and realize that yeah god did answer some of these things but some of these things i don't even desire no more like i can't believe i was actually <laughs> you know, I, I can't believe i was praying for this like what like what kind of state of being was i in when i was praying this prayer i did get this i thank god i got this this oh my god i'm so glad god didn't have this, this but that's what made me ask about yeah. prayer changing sometimes yeah. you know? but now don't you agree if that 
you would have differently wrote something differently oh, like God, your will be done in my yes. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like let your will be done. Yes, because if you would answer some of these prayers, oh boy. Amen. <laughs> let your will be done. I'll never forget when Xavier went into the hospital. And I thought it was so dope with my mom, because you know, like Xavier should have died. Real talk. Xavier should have eaten. And I, I remember hearing my mama just saying, Yo, we'll be done, Lord. And I, I was just like, Wait a minute. Wait a huh? What do you mean? I was big of a mother to say for her baby. Her, yeah. And I think sometimes in those moments, that's when God be like, You trust me. So here you go. He walks. He talks, he breathes, he's here. Because you trust him. You didn't ask me for something that I already had a plan. Don't get in my way. I won't, I won't get in yours. They make any sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me, let me, let me do it. You just be the vessel. You were created. I was created for this. So I'll be asking, just do it. Use me. Whatever you want. I, I, I think when, 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 when Mama Diane said that that will be done, God realized. You're not trying to be God for me. Because mm -hmm. don't we switch up sometimes, like, especially when you're immature in the faith, don't you switch up sometimes when you ask God for something and he don't give it to you in the time frame or the capacity or the packaging that you ask for it? So you really trying to be God for God? And you keep asking him again as if he heard you the first time? You know what I'm saying? Because you want to be God for God. So I, I think the, mo the, the most simplistic, most powerful way, less is more, is saying the old will be done. That's God saying, okay, you trust me to be God. Because mm -hmm. we don't realize how much we do that actually, it actually, it actually is hypocritical because it's defiant of trusting him. And then we get mad again, more solid expectations mm -hmm. with the Father. Of course, you're going to have it on earth. The only way to acknowledge it is says, Father, I desire this, or I hope my life destiny aligns with this, but at the end of the day, you be God. That's saying that I trust you, I lean on you, this is that to the third. Outside of that, you're trying to be God for God or coerce God to be the God you desire him to be. Yeah. And we are too insignificant and too small and frail and fragile to ever play with life as if it's not so much the way that it is. I was just about to say, for the people out there that's trying to start a business, trying to push forward in whatever they're trying to do, on the flip side of what we're saying too, isn't it also amazing when you when you get on the other side and you're like, God really came through. What? He really answered. I thought he forgot. You know, you, when you never thought you were going to get there, but then the joy of like, oh my God, I literally spoke that into existence and yeah. God did it. He forgot. You know, that side too, because there's some people that's just feeling like, and we've all been there like, I'm never going to get there. I just don't see no light. I think sometimes the worst part for me at my lowest point, when I, you know, when I had a low point, was that there was a time where I really didn't see a light. I, you know, sometimes you'd be like, if I just do this, if I could just do this, I can get out of the situation. But there's sometimes where you're like, I don't see the light. I have a question for you. When you didn't see the light, what kept you? <sighs> to be honest, I held on to what I already knew about that life. What was that? that I know he's faithful. Like I really did, I really had to go back on like, God has pulled me out of some stuff. Even though I don't see a light, I, I, like, I know God is real. Like I yeah. know it, I know it. Cause either enemy will try to trick you in your lowest time to start questioning things like, oh, like, I don't know. But it was those times where I had to really think like, God has really pulled me out of some stuff, you know. You, you, know, you know what's the most challenging thing to do is to be incredibly productive and at the same time relinquish control. Because <laughs> you gotta pray and keep it pimp. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? No. It, it, is, it is almost an oxymoron, but that is that is the tricky part about faith. You have to be incredibly productive. Get up, keep moving your feet, yes. move with optimism, don't give up. Uh, you know, don't let the red pass you notice, like, just completely destroy you. You got to keep pushing every day, being productive, making an investment, making a contribution, being active, but at the same time, 
relinquish control to the outcome of your productivity. And that's why faith is so, so such a beautiful place once you get past the fear and the confusion of this of his design. You know what I'm saying? We call that. No, I can't see it. No, I can see that. I said, Kesha, what you got that one? I, I know we have to get ready to go. Because I this you can tell we haven't done this in a while. We can keep but going. But before we go, I do want to say this because Kendall just touched on something. And that's being able to still function like this, state, right? Because I've had some low times in my life, and I see like kind of what's different from like how times has changed and how people change. And what I think sometimes with I'll just use me for an example. Sometimes what made me different from another person is sometimes like even in those low places when I didn't see a light, I still had to keep moving. I had to, like you said, I had to get up. Like, I, sometimes I even look back, like, how did I do it? Like, I got up every day. I went to work. And then I was still encouraging people. I was still preaching, you know, talking people into faith and, you know, talking God. When I'm still like, oh, that's a better way of helping understand faith without words. Yeah. It's did it, did it, did it. You know, you gotta have faith in the midst of, you know, whether you're trying to break through communication to a, a, a husband, whether you're trying to redeem your relationship with your oh. wife, whether you're fighting, you know, for a child that's in the, the, the cancer ward, like when we noticed where Kezi was at, whether you got a baby that's in the NICU, whether you got a child that's out there and is not paternal cause, we just wanna make sure they're okay. But this, you know you would qualify for that position. And there's other angles that, that play a part in you getting overlooked. Like, we gotta still keep putting forth our best efforts in everything that we do and everything we touch because we do it unto God. And I think if we get more into that and get away from the validation and the facades and the titles and the crowns and the things that we wear in our career, that peace that surpasses all understanding will have room to just rain on us and, and protect us from a world that has an insatiable appetite. It doesn't matter what you did today, tomorrow we off that. It doesn't matter what you accomplished last week, next year that's obsolete. So if we don't get to a place where we're comfortable within ourselves and we don't create a safe space, a, 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 a domain, where we don't have to run that race no more, we're gonna have an insatiable lifestyle where it'll never be full, we'll never be satisfied, it'll never be complete. And to me, that ain't no different than the walking dead. So that means that we cannot sit and swallow in our sorrow because, you know, we get addicted to that. Like, you know, after you fail, after you cry, because we're going to cry, we're going to fall, you're going to get mad, you're going to get angry, you're going to give up. You got to get back up and keep going. got to keep pushing. got to keep pushing. Because it ain't the fall that defines you. The fall don't define you if you get up. The fall was never meant to define you. It was meant to redefine. The fall only defines you a slip, a mistake, a hiccup, a bad decision. Only defines you if you stay down. But if you get up, it will redefine you. And that's why every great, I don't care, historian, entertainer, I don't care what it is. Any person who's done something great will always let you know what a place where they fell at. No matter what. The failure, the fall, I'm sorry, the fall is not to define you. If you just get back on your feet, keep moving, it will redefine you. Mm. Right. No crowns in the castle. I'm, I was sitting here thinking, I know we're going to have a whole other conversation after that conversation. That was some good stuff. You look like this wine in my cup. It's like the same. So, um, I, 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 I was sitting so yeah, so what, what I wanted to say was. That's um, a plum for a plum. <laughs> Listen, real talk, that was good stuff, y'all. Real good stuff. And I can tell you. You, we can keep going because you got some, some stuff. And, and we'll be back, not next Tuesday, but bi weekly. Bi weekly, yeah. just because the we're so busy. Um, <laughs> but we talk about this this book right here, No Crowns in the Castle, is not just about relationship. Bouncing off what Kendall was just saying, it's not about the fall, it's about how you get up. And we, we, we put all of our testimonies in here that we haven't truly felt comfortable to share with people. But when we got together, it was almost easy breezy. Like, we got to share. Because it's going to help marriages. It's going to help people who own businesses. It's going to help people who are trying to start their own business. It's going to help people who are trying to blend families. It's going to help people who have 
never spoken to their father or only met their father one time. It's gonna help people who have been abused and hurt, who have felonies, who been told they couldn't do anything, who have dropped out of school, who have graduated. It's, we got a little bit of everything in this book. And um, because we can't meet with you guys in person, because we can't do this every Tuesday, we didn't want to do a book. <laughs> we really did. It was the, it was the Taylor Talk family that kept saying, "Y'all need to do a book," and then our team came. And shout out to Hashet. We had only we had only been married around six years at the time we started working on the book. We kept saying, "What do we know?" <laughs> but we said, "What do we possess that a thirty year old couple maybe doesn't?" And we got it. We raw. You know, we we stand on top of our mistakes and our and our, and our, and our misunderstandings. And we said, "Okay, that's the place that we found comfort." We didn't do it by trying to, you know, quantitate how many years we've been together. We did it by the magnitude of things that we've overcome. And keep cooking, Corey. Yeah, so get your copy. Read it. Read it with your partner. Read it with your husband. Um, our sister, uh, Rosie and brother Maurice, read it together. What up, ball head? <laughs> Um, a, a lot of couples have reached out to us in our DMs and it's just been talking about some stuff that blessed them, which put a big smile on me and King's face. So, get your coffee, read it, we'll catch back up. I'm on date. One, two, three, to the four. Taylor Talk is back and I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I got bars. I ain't even gonna hold you. I love you. <laughs> but we love you guys. That's a little bit of Dr. Dre, I'll be sure. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but you landed. What you saying, man? So we'll see you guys October. It is October, right? Yeah. So we're we'll coming every other October week. 18. Yeah, every other week. Yeah. It's a lot of travel, a lot of hustle, a lot of, a lot of opportunities, a lot of exposure to certain things, um, a lot of impact. So. But we miss this forum. We miss you all. We look forward to more interaction and more engagement. You know, so instead of just doing nothing and waiting for the, the opportune time, the perfect time, which never comes, we, we're gonna focus on, you know, starting where we are. So we're right. glad. And if ain't nobody ever told you, ain't nobody told you lately, we're proud of each and every one of you who's watching. Proud of you. Ain't nobody ever told you in a long time, Quinn. I'm proud of the pants. Cause they hanging on to their life, <laughs> and uh, um, stop it. Yeah. See you guys. The pants say it's nine twenty-five. It's over. See you guys on October eighteenth. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Don't forget to go over right now and like this video. Right, that's Jay-Z. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the after party. Nice. Nice, please. Respect. Please give me everything. I mean, uh, uh, everything. Uh, 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 I think everybody in the neighborhood missed the after party. I, I know well, some people. Shout out to Jay-Z. Yeah, I ain't gonna say thank you for her name, but y'all know where we at. If Eagles have landed, if any of our Eagles are out here, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for letting us do what we great do. Party. <laughs> See y'all at the show. Us to come back. Keep your business on the Facebook. Keep your business on the Facebook. Is she on key tonight? Right key, sis. <laughs> That's the right key, sis. I don't give you no flowers. I ain't even going. All right, so you, you got the link to the Twitch? Yeah. OK, so I can get the link from Nice. I'm going to ping it on Facebook. Like, we probably do it on IG too, and that way y'all can hit the link. We're already pinned on Facebook, so I'll okay. be on IG. Okay, but we gotta pin it on Facebook. Well, why don't y'all run over to Facebook? And is that easier? Yeah, it'll be easier yeah. for them to hit the link on Facebook. Yeah, go over to my, my Queen's page on Facebook, hit the link, and then uh, let's see what happens. Oh my God, I'm about to party a little bit. It's been so long, I've been working so hard. Man, I'm gonna eat some baked chicken. Where you put baked chicken some chicken? <laughs> where, where you get baked chicken from? You need to be worried about them legs <laughs> and them thighs. We gotta pray, guys. We gotta pray, we gotta pray. Don't oh, okay, okay, okay. Don't eat the chicken in front of me, honey, because I'm doing soup. <laughs>
It's good, sweet girl. Thank you, Travis. Sorry, we have to say. Oh, I can't have none. I had my shake. That's all right. Yeah. Shout out to the people who's trying to live a good, nice, slim, healthy life. Have to get back, Lord. Thank you. You can call my legs a whole way. Well, don't you get weathered and well done. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and put that on out there now. I know what I signed up for. Don't you get with it and well done. Kids, let's pray. <laughs> what happened when you signed up for something? Else? <laughs> <laughs> and you, and when you signed up for something and they change it, that's not cool. So I'm going to keep a little bit of it, but some of us got to trim down. I need you to keep three fourths of it. Father, thank you for laughter, especially in times such as this. Let us not be remiss to lift up the people in Florida who, uh, you know, woke up one day and that life's work was gone and new people and loved ones. Let us not take for granted this opportunity that we have. We trust you and we depend on you. We go astray at times. Sometimes we lose our way. But we thank you that you hold no grudges and that you welcome us with open arms. So, in all capacity, let Taylor talk be a safe place. Let it be a place where we can come together on Tuesdays and just let go. Not just some deep topics of comfort and uh, protection, and then also party and celebrate and lift each other up so we can uh, approach the rest of the week and be productive while still maintaining our faith. So we love you, we thank you, we give you all the honor that you deserve. And your son, yes, she was in prayer. Amen. Early in the morning, we
Okay, let me. Find us out on Facebook. Facebook family. Meet us on Twitch. What do they have to put in? Just type in www.twitch. Alright, y'all give me a minute. Slash DJ Sharnice. Alright, I'm, I'm ready to put a link in here right now. Alright, let's see. Alright, let me see what this is. Gotta go to Twitch. so they can hit them. I'm about to come off here. I love you. 